Please welcome Wesley Lowry. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. First things first, uh, congratulations on winning the Pulitzer Prize. Well, that's thank a, you. That's thank an you amazing honor for you. Thank you. And, um, and deserve it as well. Uh, you and your team put together a really comprehensive database mm -hmm. of police shootings. What surprises me is that one didn't exist before that. How is that possible? It's remarkable, right? When we started covering these stories, I started covering them with Ferguson, Missouri, and you would have the police unions, the police, they would say, this never happens. Most officers never fire their guns. These are rare. Everyone who gets killed deserves it. The civil rights, the activists, they would say, no, black men are getting gunned down, executed every day. And so finally we were like, wait a second, you know, there's a fact here somewhere. One of yeah. them is true, one is not. Um, how can we get at that? At the time, there were a few citizen journalism outfits that were trying to do this, but the federal government doesn't keep this data. And so we started piecing it together day by day, literally via Google uh, searches. My colleagues, uh, uh, Julie Tate and Jennifer Jenkins, kind of pieced this together to try to figure out how many people are getting killed and, and under what circumstances. That's a, that's a, it's a Herculean task to take on, and I mean, you were taking it on at a time when in America you could feel tensions rising, mm -hmm. people saying over and over again, and obviously due to the rise of cell phone videos, you know, people were like, can you not see what is happening to us? What's fascinating is that I still get emails. Um, there'll be a shooting tomorrow, mostly. You know, there are three, three people are shot and killed by the police every single day in the United States of America, right? Um, not, out, not all of those go viral, most of them don't. But yeah. every time we have a new case that goes viral that everyone's talking about, a hashtag that trends, I'll get new emails and new calls, some of them from the same people who've been emailing me and calling me every day and saying lots of nice, not nice things. But they will, they'll call me and sometimes they'll say, wait, but all the other ones, those people deserved it, but this guy, this is crazy. Can you believe they, they shot and killed this person? Yeah. That we have this thing, you know, this has been happening in black and brown communities for the, all of American history, right? Black and brown families have always known um, that an interaction with the police could go sideways. But we as a nation essentially have refused to believe black and brown people when they tell us these things. And so what cell phone cameras have done is in many ways they have exposed our unwillingness to believe black people when they say, hey, sometimes the cops aren't so nice to us. Sometimes they kill us and we, and we shouldn't be killed. And we see video after video, story after story, where you, you have ones where there are gray areas. Should this person have been shot? Should they have not? Others where the guy's clearly getting shot in the back. Right? Yes. And before cell phone camera videos, no one believed those things ever happened. Every dead black guy must deserve it, they would say. What's interesting about this book, though, is you've taken a slightly different approach to strict journalism, mm -hmm. and that is you have involved yourself which has really personalized the stories, not just of the victims, but of you being in this world. Because when you went out to Ferguson, I don't think even you anticipated, from what I read in the book, how big this movement would become. I mean, at one point, you were arrested yeah. for just being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Of course, I was one of dozens of reporters who at some point got arrested in Ferguson. It was fascinating, because when I first went to Ferguson, I was a political reporter, I covered yeah. Congress, and I thought that I'd be dropping in for a day, I'd write a cute little story or something, maybe I'd write something for the weekend, and I thought I'd be home by that weekend, mm -hmm. drinking with my buddies, where, you know, where we always go out. And instead, um, I landed and I could immediately sense, like you could feel it in the air, that this is something bigger, that this, is, this anger has really boiled over in a way that it had not previously. And, and we watch as we go from city to city, as new activists spring up who get involved, new shootings occur, and you just have this feeling um, throughout these last two years that this is something bigger uh, than just one story, than just an isolated incident, than just, than, than just the story of Michael Brown or Eric Gardner or Sandra Bland, that rather this is part of a of movement that is caramelizing. There's something fascinating that, that you wrote here that I, I, I connected with. You know, I'll read the passage. You said, there's no right way to approach these interviews. In the moment, uh, you, you are literally walking up to a heartbroken human, someone struggling to avoid becoming completely engulfed by a wave of pain and confusion, and asking them to find words to express those feelings and thoughts. And the 24-hour news cycle doesn't help because it so often prompts reporters to ask either cliched, leading soundbite, bait, or process questions to which the response of the dead man or family's woman adds little, which is a really strong indictment because what you're saying is essentially, because the cycle is based on entertainment, 
24 hour news needs something that is catchy and grabby. You can't ask a person how they feel. You need it to fit in one sentence. Of course, this, we, we are talking about the fundamental issue at the basis of the foundation of this nation, right? Race in America, race and justice. And we're walking up to you after your son has just been killed and we're saying, so how do you feel? So do you think you're gonna get justice? Yeah. Um, and then we're cutting you off after 15 seconds to put you on the evening news, right? Um, we're going to a protest where you've been at marching for five hours, you've been crying, you, you've carried a sign, maybe you've flown into town um, to participate this, in this, and we're giving you half a sentence in the newspaper. So why are you out here tonight? That's not a way to have a conversation about this, to, to deal with the nuances, to deal with the complexities. Uh, I think one of the things I tried to do in this book was tell the stories of the activists who I met as I've gone city to city. Yeah, yeah because you did I, a great job with that. Because I believe that if you can understand one of these activists as a human, not as a caricature, not as, oh, that crazy radical from the TV that night, but as a three-dimensional human being, their motivations, their fears, why they're in those streets, if you can understand one of the people in the streets, then perhaps you can understand the thousand people and the hundred thousand people that make up this type of movement. And, and so that's kind of what I seek to do is how do we seize the humanity of the people behind these headlines because whether you agree with the protest movement or not, these are real human beings in the streets in pain. And if you can't empathize with that, there, there's, no, there's nowhere, in our conver nowhere for our conversation to go. Uh, you've, you've really captured it and uh, one reason I'd recommend everyone to read this book is because it's not just statistics, it's not just the information, but it's the connective tissue that shows the human story behind it. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much Thanks for being so on the show. Trevor, I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Hey there, it's The Daily Show's Trevor Noah. We have our own YouTube channel now, so uh, please do subscribe. Uh, I'll, I'll wait so you can... I won't even look, just because I know that's weird. It's sort of like when a dog's doing its thing. You can just... Yeah, just subscribe. I won't, I won't look.